We asked Nigerians to share the stories of their mothers, the sacrifices they made for them, the journey of pain, love, devotion, and struggles made by our mothers to make us who we are today. They shared their stories with us. Thousands of entries, hundreds of interviews, and documentary across the country. 20 unique stories have been selected for us to learn from, appreciate, and celebrate. The sacrifices and devotion are real. Real people, real stories, real experiences. The emotional true life experiences being shared, narrated, and dramatized are simply captivating. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the most touching stories of our mothers. The Supermom Reality TV Show starts now. For a long time, people had always looked for ways to appreciate their mothers. A friend, life bearer, a defender, a shield. Let's not forget that she's also a sister, a wife and maybe a leader in every sphere of life you can think of. No wonder musicians all over the world wax songs just to appreciate these rare gems. Queen of my life, you are so beautiful, mama, so beautiful, Amy, mama, 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 The makers go to the extra mile to weave stories about mother's love, sacrifices, devotion, and loyalty. Some of the mothers go as far as stopping to live so their children's life would be richer and better. The need for the Super Mom reality show was conceived and Nigerians were eager to share their stories. Thousands of entries were sent from every part of the country and from these, stories were picked and dramatized. The Super Mom reality show season 1 was broadcast in several television stations across the country. The first episode was on the importance of mothers, the role as nation builders and how far a mother can go. It was a documentary that touched every sphere of motherhood. The second episode was the beginning of the pairings between two mothers as they struggle to make it to the next stage, which is determined by the number of votes they receive from viewers at home. Mrs. Muibat Adisa and Olomushua Ajibike Janet were both determined mothers who wanted the best for their children. Mrs. Janet Olomushua did everything she could to make sure her children were not just educated but also protected from every problem she must have had as a young woman herself while growing up. My education was so low, so I guess I let me just train my child because she was the only one there. Then, uh, I said shoe and bag. There's someone who used to struggle, so give me that shoe. At times, I will sell egg. So I'll take egg to the market and sell. So, I go to the school, they ask me, uh, where is Tosi Daddy? Why don't Tosi Daddy come and pay? So I decided, let me just give the money to Tosi Daddy to go and pay. At times, if I give him that money, he just spend it. But at the end of the episode, Mrs. Muibat Adisa was voted by the viewers to make it to the next stage. Mrs. Muibat Adisa is a 75-year-old woman who sacrificed for her sick children when their father was nonchalant about their welfare taking risks on several occasions on their behalf. It was a love and devotion that held a family together. This is how her story went. The story I'm about to tell is what my mother told me she went through in raising us up. We were about to register. My in 1957. She had her first child. Everybody was very happy for her having it at the right time. But something else set up. <laughs> Take it. You see, you have to get one for me. 
When, when she had my uh, third born, on the night day of his bed, she noticed the guy was very hot, very, very hot. So on examination, it was discovered that every the color of the skin, the color of the hair and the palm has changed. So she was very mad. Very late in the night, around 3 a.m., she had, she had to walk all alone to the hospital. <laughs> And so, Muibat took her nine-day-old sick child to the hospital at 3 a.m., ready to face any odds, till her child gets medical assistance. Every time that is gone, she's strong. She the tiny, no the small, no easy at all, love. The third episode of the Super Mom reality show season one saw Madame Atinuka Johnson emerge winner. Though it was not an easy feat for her as the other mother, Mrs. Ifoma Pius took us through her life as a young widow with three young daughters to raise after the death of her husband. Why I say she's a super mom is because 10 years ago when I was born, that was 19 February 2000, my dad died. And so, we are abandoned. Um, my dad relatives promised to take care of us. Friends were advising my mom that she should abandon us and run away. But my mom refused, as a super mom would do. It wasn't easy. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Lillian was uh, four then. Mm -hmm. Then Sandra was two. Then this uh, Miriam was a uh, month. You know. Actually, I was coping with my in laws then. But they promise they will do this, they will do that, they will do that. And after two years, all of them gave up. With no skills or previous work experience, she rose up to the needs of her children, enduring humiliation, scorn, and reproach, just so her daughters would get the best out of life. Mrs. Spires, what do you want me to do? I can't pay my teachers. Every prince decides to act like this. Please, ma. These children have been at home for five days. I cannot continue like this. Why their mates will be fired? Please, help our mother. I want to come to school. Please, ma. Help us. On the other hand, Madame Atinuke Johnson, a 70-year-old woman, learned early that distance cannot be a barrier. Between her and her son, shuttling from Kano to Ibadan was a big deal for her, as long as she could be there for her son, Ibukunle Alao Shomoye. In times of need, she was there for him. 1965, my mom got pregnant for my dad. My dad was accusing her of not telling him, telling him that she had a daughter and that because of that he's not going to accept the pregnancy she has to terminate the pregnancy she refused that thing inside your belly is not mine how can you say that you are not me you can say what you like but i don't want to see you when i return not neglecting her other children too in the process now let's take a quick glimpse at Madame Atinuke Johnson's story. So after that, before Papa traveled to, to Kano, when I reach Kano, there's another problem. I don't like this at all. I don't like it. I don't. The child should be with his father. But he said the baby was not his own. He said that I have told to bring him up that he now wants him. My son is rude. And he even said he's not taking the boy to live with him and his new wife. What difference does it make? The child will live with me. The most important thing is for the child to know his father's family. <laughs> that he should leave my son with me. I'm not that of taking care of him. <laughs> oh my God. I am not crying. In fact, I am happy. Your grandma here is taking you away to Ibadan to stay with her. And you know what? What? 
out. Your father will be coming here to visit you. My father? Yes. Remember how you used to ask about him. <laughs> he has returned from that long journey I told you about. But I'm going to leave you and Grandpa here. Yeah. I'm not going to leave you. I will visit Ibado from time to time. I can't turn my back on you! <laughs> The Supermom Season 2, a celebration of our mothers. The fourth episode could be termed the Clash of the Titans, as we saw two strong mothers with fantastic stories slog it out. Mrs. Deborah Ioni is 70 years old and a mother of two who knew at an early stage of her marriage that having more children would simply be a burden, as her husband had shown that it is the woman's responsibility to care for her children's upkeep and even education. She rose up to the task, doing any menial job she could lay her hands on when her shop was engulfed by fire. Through this, she was able to give her children the education they needed. I, she's the best mom in the whole world for some certain reason, which I'm going to point out now. I think there was an incident that happened then. There was one day she was accused. I think from what they left over the previous day, they asked her to take it. She took it, but the daughter of the woman accused her of, of stealing. So on getting home, she left and we on getting home, we met her crying. She, we asked her what happened. She told us what happened, so we joined the crime. I saw when she take her, she took the money. Oh my god, take the money, wait till I won't take her. Too. What do you talk? Her. What do you not be take the money do? I they ask you, what do you not be take the money do? Not be you they always carry your children, go up and down like some other people don't know which they go take their time. Oh my mama de obani. Ah, mama. At the end, viewers voted for Mrs. Omotayo Adelano. Her love and devotion for her children was too strong for the viewers to overlook. Rejected by her husband, she lost her home and business. But she never lost sight of what was important, her children. This is how her story went. So when he, he left us in a one-room apartment, my neighbor sells kerosene and uh, star bottle and Coca-Cola bottle. So uh, knowing this for me, Busola ran over those bottles and drank. And it was an apprentice that came into the salon and called me that Busola is in coma. So we rushed out to the hospital. I left her in the hospital, went to the phone booth at Ikeja and called him that this is what is going on. And what he will tell me is that I should go and tell his uncle in case she died so that they can bury her. So I was, I was shocked. How can a man say this to his own child? For Superman Reality TV Show. The fifth episode, like most episodes of the Superman Reality Show, was touching and emotion as we watched these women toil like men for their children just to make ends meet. Like Maria Thomas said in her interview, she cannot really point at one job her mother did for a living. She did everything and anything to assist her husband. At one time, Mrs. Thomas Abu labored at a construction site, helped in carrying purchase goods at the market, and did water vending. I took part of the 
the other hand, Mrs. Nina Blessing Everest's husband had just lost his job. Nina rose to the occasion to be the head of a family without undermining the authority of her husband. She made sure there was food on the table, clothes on her children. The school fees were paid on time, not because she was a wealthy woman, but like most super moms, she learned how to stretch her meager earnings. So I think she's super for all this because when my baby first sick, I will recurring what I give the boy. Whether the thing had been contaminated or not. So I now took the boy. On my way going, I had a voice. I had a voice. He said, should take this boy home to do. I went to the people that is giving tickets. The driver now went there to tell them that they should not give me tickets. It's devil now. Devil wants me to sleep in this Lagos. And I tell my husband, instead of me to sleep in this Lagos, I will use lake. I live, I live Lagos. Three buses, we are there, the three buses full, move. None of them carried me. Where am I? Where, where can I get moto? And I'm crying, crying, crying. And I leave them. Went one place and pray. When I pray, finish. I move and leave that our side. I went to where Calabar people is loaded. When I got there, the man said, Madam, what is your problem? I said, I want to travel. This is my boy. It's not finished. And my mother called me that I should bring this boy today. I have to drop at Taba. The motor will now go to Calabar. Immediately we go down from that vehicle. It just starts. It started stooling. What is this? What should happen now? What should happen? Now shit happen. Come out here. Ah, oh God, beg no be shit now, beg. Because that word that God that I should leave Lagos and I obey that word. That is only where I stand. Nothing will happen to me, Chair. The Supermom Season 2, a celebration of our mothers. Mrs. Helene Okume is 43 years old, mother of four children. Her husband never allowed her to do anything till he fell sick and the family's savings went into his treatment. They did not only lose him to the cold hands of death, the family money went with him. This young woman literally patronized dustbins to feed her children till reality set in and she did everything to make sure they survived. The viewers' emotions were drawn to Mrs. Regina Ophili's story as she was voted to the next stage of the show. There is nothing as touching as seeing a woman stand as a father and mother for her children so they don't look different from their peers. Mrs. Regina Ophili tried all she could for her children when she was left alone to fend for her two children. Today, they are both graduates, thanks to her unwavering love and devotion. Then one day, a lady came in. I saw the lady came in. Another, that's a friend to them, came into my apartment. So before I knew it, she touched my baby on the head. Ada, how are you? You know, I didn't mean any, I didn't mean read any meaning to it. Ada, how are you? How are you? I said, fine, thank you, ma. Then she went into the room of my, my neighbors. Then I, I continued with my cooking. But I noticed something that uh, the baby that was playing suddenly kept quiet. So by the time I finished my cooking, I brought her out. I just, she, she was transformed. Her countenance changed. Everything about her changed. Even her eyes changed. Then she started running temperature. Then something missed her to me. That, that hand, on my daughter said, something has gone wrong. She couldn't even eat anymore. So that night I brought my Bible. I went on my knees. I went through the Bible. This from 25. I converted it into prayer. Say, God, 
Do not allow the enemy to triumph over me. Do not allow them to ask me where is my God. So I woke up. I said, this, this is uh, God speaking. I should take this uh, child away because that woman has tried once. She might want to try again in my absence since I always leave her with, with the nanny. So that is how now I have to, to take her to the village to go and join my to go and join her brother in the village. Yes, she could have settled down with a, a man and have a normal family. She spends it catering for two children. My mom is a beautiful woman. The seventh episode was a tough decision. Both mothers did not make it easy in any way for the viewers to choose. Mrs. Felicia Obianuju is a widow with seven children. This 54-year-old woman lost everything after her husband died. She became the defender of her children when armed robbers came in the middle of the night. She was their provider, even where there was nothing to give. She lost her business to the government, but she never lost focus on where she wants her children to be. And today they are there. They are all graduates and doing well, thanks to their mother. If you see her on the way coming back from the school, she will, be, she will not be walking straight. She will be going by the side of the road looking for empty bottles. When she picks the, uh, these empty bottles, when she comes back, we will look for the onigos. They will buy it. Then they will go and buy gari. So when they buy the gari, now we will soak it, put it. Then all of them will just round the table like this. We put pour water inside the gari. When this one wants to put it, remove her hand. Let the gari soft first. Mrs. Tella Uzuamaka Udonji made it to the next stage of the show. A mother of five children who stood beside her son who fell ill mysteriously. She abandoned her business going from one hospital to another, looking for a solution to his problem. Stella refused the doctor's report when they told her all hope was lost. Then we went to this um, Ikote Bene Road, 111 Ikote Bene Road, to do tests. The man is doing scanning and uh, x-ray. Uh, he did the x-ray and the scanning, the belly. Because the pens, he was in pens, the pens is coming from the, to the belly the, to, uh, to here, at the back and at the heart. So the man did the heart x-ray, did the scanning uh, at the stomach. And still after doing it, we took the, the director to Ebenma Hospital, and that's Ikote Bene Road. We went there and saw a doctor. The doctor said that he could not do anything about it. <laughs> what is the matter? I cannot handle this. <laughs> Today, her son is hale and hearty thanks to a mother who never stopped believing that if the doctors cannot do it, there is a God that can. The eighth episode saw Mrs. Musumola Musa and Lady Veronica slog it out. Mrs. Musumola Musa is a 51-year-old mother with two children who did everything as a mother for her children after her husband threw her out of the house. Their education and upkeep never lags behind. So I said I will not pay for his school fees again. Then he said you get when I said you should go to school, you will go. You will go. It's because of you I'm sovereign like this. But the viewers were drawn to ever-loving Lady Veronica, a 71-year-old mother with seven children. A second child had Down syndrome disease. We see her cater for Uchenna with her other six children to the extent that she had to travel to India to learn more on how to care for his needs. After Uchenna's wife left him, Lady Veronica took the role of a caregiver to her son. Here is a quick recap of Lady Veronica's story. So when I had him, um, it was in a Catholic mission hospital when the Reverend Sisters came they said, mm. The boy is not ripe yet, but he was just long, not behaving too well. But 
My husband was not around then. Then when he came back, I said, yeah. Can we have a child at eight months, you know, pregnancy? So we were looking at him, but uh, by the grace of God, he started growing. Anyway, my mom raised all of us equally. Parties for my brother, take him out and everything. And he attended a normal school like all of us. But he couldn't cope because other children would laugh at him and try to beat him up. <laughs> Marie, stop crying. Allow them to say whatever they want, okay? They jar at him. Beat him up. Say he is Mumu. Don't mind him. Your brother is no Mumu. He's God's child, okay? Now stop crying. Going to school was the only thing that disturbed me when he got to that age. And uh, in Nigeria, you can't be there without going to school. That was why I put him in the normal school here. Yeah. He wasn't coping, but he learned how to take care of him in their midst, like defense. The Superman reality TV show. The ninth episode showed us how another widow, Mrs. Elizabeth Wise, did her best to be a mother and father to her six children after her husband died. This petty trader did not relent in her efforts to make sure no aspect of her children's lives was lacking. Mrs. Comfort Ngwaifere Ijomas made it to the next stage. Her story brought back the memories of the Nigerian Civil War. Her son, Richard Olukodano, though a little boy at that time, recounts how his mother made sure he survived alongside his eight-month-old sister through the horrors of the war that saw her live in the forest for months with her children in hiding. When you to come the cry, I say, hey, God, who go help me? Who go help me? So, I said, read the place. He said, no, that time we don't raise finish. I said, uh, you said, make you enter this person, make I see. Enter this person, see if you enter, make you lie down for that blood where I buy put inside. No shake, I come, put, the sister, they go. I come where I'm in, in good for my head. So when we move small, I can't say the sister, make you sit down again. Make you no shake, you know, shake from here down. You know, go die. You know, sister, nah, no person to help us. I carried the other one for back row. When the air race started, we had to run for cover. Therefore, my mother ran through the bush, carrying us on his head in the, in the pan that he was, she was carrying with some clothes in it. She ran through the bush pass, dodging and hiding as much as possible so that she will not be seen. Of course, following the company, those that were in front of her. Oh, when we reach our place, I said, ah, let me rest. Within two or three days, ah, the wall start there again. Every person, they run, 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 run. Oh. The tenth episode saw Mrs. Juliana Chinagorum survive a difficult period in her husband's life when things were bad. She would go from one party to another, gathering food for her children. When her son was sick, she sold her blood just to pay for his hospital bills. She did not allow the situation affect their education as she made sure everything ran smoothly in the house. So one day, when I came back from my work, he got attack of asthma on that day. I rushed him to the hospital. And I went there. I had no money with me. Wake up. I told the doctor to treat him. He said I should make a deposit, which I had none. So I stayed there 
thinking that maybe the doctor will have a change of mind. Then, fortunately for me, I saw some nurses running her task. I asked them what happened. <laughs> they said that uh, the doctor's uh, son. I've been sitting down here and I've been seeing you going up and down. Is anything the matter? It is the doctor's son. He's here on admission. We need his blood, but we cannot find it. What's his blood type? A positive. A positive. I share same blood group with him. Can I donate blood in exchange of the treatment of my son? Why not? That's a very good idea. Let's go see the doctor. No, not the doctor. Hold on, please. I donated a pint of blood for him to treat his son. He asked me again. When they finished with that one, they said that they needed two other. I said that I'm late. Then, but it's as in attentive, not uh, immediately. So after that one, I bought a, I think I bought a, a tin of milk and I drank it. Then they donated the second one. I donated the second one. The doctor was very, very happy and he treated my son. As usual, the viewers made their choice. They voted for Mrs. Blessing Upabi. Mrs. Blessing Anyafu Upabi is a 52-year-old widow with six children who educated her children by being a cleaner in the day and a petty trader at night. With her petty trade, she was able to build her house. Though incomplete when they moved in, she did everything to shield her children. I told her, I said, Iyari said I should follow her. He said, my daughter, oh yeah. Go. I asked my mommy. I call her my mommy, yes. I said, Mommy, you said I should follow Mrs. Yare. She said, Yes. I said, Supposing we see the place, how am I going to pay? How am I going to build it? She laughed. She said, The Lord will build it for you. Not forgetting their education, clothing, and health care. My church also. They gave me 50,000 or 40,000 that I should, I should use it to do one thing or the other. But my dear sister, I did not use that money to do one thing or the other because their school fees were standing waiting for me. Today, her children are grateful for her love. The 11th episode was very emotional as it was a story of two women left to their fates with their children. Barista Francesca Adeshomo Idehe is 50 years old with a mentally ill husband who she cares for. Obviously, she took her marital vows to heart. This mother of nine knew the importance of education just as she was making sure her children got the best. I was not going to school. They joined the conductor group. I was not happy with it. He will come and steal my money. He will carry the little things I have and take it outside. For days, he will not come home. I said, you must go to school. First of all, I use the police to discipline him. By the time I discipline him, he stopped that conducting work. Though her colleagues shunned her, she was never ashamed to be a barrister during the day and a petty trader in the evening, just so her children can get the best. I was farming. Into, I was into many things. I was selling. What do I say? Pepper vegetable. How do I do it? Very early, five o'clock. I go to Pobahe or this Oka. Even to a Weka, another village down. I get Gary Blue. I go and drop it in my store. I have a store made with wood. You want it now in Oba Market. And from there, I go to work. After closing, I will be about at Oba Market from 4 o'clock, even that it was 3.30 to 11 p.m. As touching as this episode was, Mrs. Nkechi Rapu became the choice of the viewers. She would eventually emerge the winner of the Supermom reality show season 1. Mrs. Nkechi Rapu is a mother of 8 children and Stephen happens to be one of her children. At age 4, Stephen became crippled. 
her husband would later leave her because of this. Because whom seems to be their father rejected me because, uh, because of his condition. We see her leave her job as a manager in a hotel to become a petty trader so she would be around to pick up Stephen from school. When his crotches were bad, Nkechi became Steve's legs, backing him to and from school. He started school before, before penalizing. Then after penalizing, he didn't go to school until I come back from Moji. So when I come back from Moji, Moji people said that they have finished their work. I said, okay, if so, let him start school. Then I started in schooling. I back him to school. I back him back. Today, Stephen is a graduate and a civil servant with his own family. Now I am a civil servant. I'm, I'm a graduate, uh, a, a national diploma graduate of a Academy of Study at IC Study Center here in Nigeria. I'm a civil servant, married with a son. My mother, I, I'm trying to tell my mother's story because I want people to celebrate my mother with me. Thanks to a mother who sacrificed her career, time, love, and devotion for her child. The Superman Reality TV Show. From the 10 stories that made it to the next stage, the viewers were made to vote again, and Mrs. Blessing Upabi came third. Mrs. Muibat Adisa second, while Mrs. Nkechi Rapu emerged winner of the show. A lot of promises were made at the beginning of the show, and those promises were kept. At the winner's party that was held February 2011, Mrs. Blessing Upabi was presented with a cheque of 500,000 Naira, and Mrs. Muibat Adisa, who came second place, went home with a brand new car. And last but not the least, the winner of the Supermom reality show season 1 was presented with the keys to a new house. The search for the Supermom Season 2 is on. Massive publicity was made for the entries to be sent. The Supermom train went from one town to another, creating awareness. The town storm began at Abelkuta, where it was activated at the stadium. The train took the time out to visit the palace of Oba Ishile of Ebalan, Oba Adedak or Tejosho. The Supermom train left for Ibadan, not forgetting to enjoy the sight and sounds of the town. They visited the Genesis Boas Towers, which was erected in December 1936 in honor of Captain Ross L. Boa, who was the first resident and traveling commissioner of interior Yoruba land between 1893 and 1877. They also visited the palace of the Alafi of Oyo, when we are talking about murder, the true murder is quite easier or let me say it's quite easier to identify. The true murder is the woman who gives the right education, right caring, all these kind of important things to their children. That are the true murder. The Superman Reality TV Show. As the search of the Supermom continues from one town to another, don't forget that the Supermom reality show season 2 promises to be exciting, emotional, captivating, and most of all, promises to be a celebration of motherhood. So if you're born of a mother who has shown you unconditional love, who only sees the good in you when others felt nothing good could come out of you, join us to celebrate these angels on earth. I just want to tell you that I love you so much. So I was thinking my mom was super. She was extraordinary. The Superman Season 2.
a celebration of our mothers. Again, participate by voting for your favorite mothers to remain on the show. Like it was in the first season, 20 mothers will be selected. Two mothers will be placed side by side in each episode of one hour each week. If need be, our team will travel to the town where these mothers reside to record their stories. Sight and sound of that town will be shown as she tells her story. Once again, viewers will be the ultimate judge of the show. They alone have the sole right to vote which mother makes it to the next stage of the show. The winning mom will be celebrated at a grand winner's party with red carpet events where family, friends, sponsors will host the super mom to a special dinner and her prizes would be presented. All participating mothers would not go home empty-handed. They will be rewarded with prizes from sponsors. You can win for your mother a brand new car, a house and monetary prizes. This is another opportunity to appreciate your mother, love her, hug her. Maybe you can go to the extent of kissing her, telling her once again how important she is in your life. Tell her a labor of love will never go unrecognized. Inasmuch as life can be so busy and we tend to forget those things that are really important to us, let's not forget to show love to our mothers who never ask for much. Give her a hug today. It may be small, but it speak volumes. The Supermom Season 2 a celebration of our mothers.